to actually develop a model that can do terminology and translation, meaning to create a corpus and then annotate the corpus in terms and then how can we reach two communities? Like we have scientists, we have Wikipedians, they can help each other, but how do we reach them? Okay, so I got this sentence from English Wikipedia, I don't know the name of the article, but it's about quark, so it's from a physics article, it says, in the ray case of a hypernucleus, a third biome called blah 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 blah. So as you can see, there are a lot of technical terms, right? And they are quite hard to translate. So what happens is, you can try different translators, like Yandex or ChatGPT, and you will end up either with missing terms or wrong translations, and sometimes, of course, they can also do a good work. So the thing is, in Turkey, we have a consortium of experts, and they have developed a terminology database. So imagine 30 physicists just discussing like how should we translate this term into Turkish. And they arrive at a consensus, and then they create a database. So the idea is, can we use this database to guide the translation models to do a better translation? So that's the idea of terminology of a translation. But of course, databases are never fully, uh, they are never complete, right? There is always a missing term. So the idea is we should also help the experts, Wikipedians, to tell them which, which terms are missing so that they can update the database. So what are the problems now? There are a huge number of articles in Wikipedia translated from English to Turkish chapters and people are mostly using content translation tool. So it's about 500,000 paragraphs. And of course, as I showed you before, there are some issues with translating because they require some domain expertise and not all the volunteers have that domain expertise, right? So it's quite challenging. And of course people are using tools, but the tools are still not perfect. So this is our preliminary work. This is machine translation, this is human, this is chat GPT. So for instance, overall, when we look at the consistency of the terms, the translation, consistency. What I mean is we check if it's same as the database translation or not. We see that scientific ones are always harder and when we look at the overall accuracy, humans are the best still with 67. Chat GPT is not bad, 57. But machine translation tools like Google Translate and Yandex, they are still bad. So is there a reason why ChatGPT is different from machine translation? Well, it, of course. <laughs> it's not it included in our, in our machine translation. So, so it's a generalist. The content, the content translation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the content translation tool. So I think at the background it's using uh, Yandex. As it far depends as on the languages. Though. Oh, okay. Very much so. It would have been interesting for future <laughs> study if you want to go and look at the new, uh, mach uh, new machine learning uh, translation tool from the foundation itself. Mm -hmm. It's called MinT. Uh, for Romanian at least, it's slightly better than Google Translate and a lot better than Yandex. But the, depending on the pair of languages, the, your results might vary a lot. Yeah, we just downloaded everything from Content Translation Dump yeah, and it was seeing the engine and the engines we saw was Yandex and Google Translate. Yeah. But yeah, there might be more. Okay, so it's a hard problem. And of course, what, what we can do is we can also try to increase the number of volunteers, Wikipedians, with specific expertise. But you know that it's really hard. 
Okay, so what we are proposing here is let's build some models that can use the terminology database. And meanwhile, let's connect experts and Wikipedians so that they can help each other. This is just a proposal, I mean, it's kind of a technical figure, so I'm not going to go into pretty much all the details. But the idea is, let's start from the English one. Let's identify all the technical terms. And then let's link these terms to the database so that we can get what terms are missing and what's the correct Turkish translation. Then we can build a machine translation model on top of course, to do all of this, we need a parallel corpora. That means English text one side and Turkish text on the other side, so that you can train a model on this parallel. So that's called the parallel corpora. Physics, maths, and computer science. 
So we looked at the glossaries to find like the terms, and then we started extracting the documents from content translation with the translation itself. And then we ended up with around 500,000 paragraphs with all the translated documents. Then we did a lot of cleaning and filtering. I'm not going to go into details, but they will be available in the project website, like removing duplicates or spatial characters and so on. And then since we wanted to end up with parallel corporate with a lot of terms in them, we just removed the paragraphs that have, doesn't have enough terms. And finally, we manually reviewed the quality of the translation. So in the end, it looks like our starting point was like large, 500,000, right? But after all this cleaning and pre-processing, we ended up with only 1,200 sentences. That's, this is because we restricted the domain and we also did quality check. And that's why we, don't, we didn't have enough. And we needed like 3,000 sentences to build the model. Yeah, this is the uh, cleaning steps. I'm just going to skip it. Yeah, another nice thing for Turkish is that we have the Turkish National Thesis Center, York Test. And every graduate student who ever done a thesis has to upload their thesis abstract in English and in Turkish. And that's why we can have a lot of technical abstracts there. So we have glanced over all the thesis abstracts. And they are experts, so it should be a good translation, right? So we have found like 2,000 sentences from around 300 theses, but we have, um, in order not to encounter some quality issues, we have only checked the top Turkish universities, only six universities, and again, only three fields. Uh, we have one more question. So yes. in this case, the PhD, the, the, the thesis center includes a PhD thesis or PhD and masters. Bet you don't know. No, okay. Just graduate level. And we also have the keywords, so you can do a lot of filtering. It's a nice data set. The keywords in both languages again. Hmm? The keywords are in both languages. The abstracts are in both languages, mm. but not the whole thesis. Okay. So finally, we ended up with 1,100 cent uh, sentences from three different domains as we wanted. And we ended up with more thesis abstracts than Wikipedia content. But still we have like a mixture of Wikipedia and uh, thesis abstracts. Okay, so I talked about corpus, so I'm going to talk about... Huh? <coughs> I will need more, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we need to prepare this annotation guideline, right? What are the steps, how to use the interface, what are some special cases? So I'm not going to go through all of them, obviously. It would take one hour. But as you can see, it's like a 30-page document with all the details. So all the annotators have to read it. But I'm just going to give you like an overview of like what we did. So first step, we asked everyone to identify the terms in the English text. By the way, we have um, chosen three sentences from the same paragraph because the context is important sometimes. So when you see three sentences from the same paragraph, you have the context and you can do better translation. And then we have asked them to identify all the Turkish terms. And then they need to link them. Like, this is translation of that, this is the translation of that one, and so on. 
And next, uh, they need to check the database, the terminology database, if the translation is correct. For instance, they check for deterministic modeling, and then you can see the English one. Sometimes you have synonyms, you have alternatives, you have multiple senses, but these are like spatial cases. So if they can find it, they will say that, okay, I found this term, so they add, add a link. And then they say, okay, it should be gerekirci modelleme. So, but they say deterministic modelleme. So this is kind of a wrong translation according to the database. So they label it with wrong translation with the pink one. And then they correct it here. And they do it for 3,300 sentences. Yeah, so there are some cases, for instance, in the database you don't have the terms. So what you can do, you can try to uh, find some alternatives. So we also provide some alternative databases. But uh, I will skip the spatial cases because we have like 10, but if you are curious, I can show them. So for instance, we have synonyms, like here, yapay öğrenim, machine learning, makine öğrenimi. There are synonyms. Sometimes there are, this pen is like disconnected. You have some connectors like ants, so you need to handle them. We have abbreviations. Sometimes the number of terms does not match in the translation. They just make up some new terms in the Turkish one for some reason, I don't know. Sometimes you have the Latin ones, like Latin plurals, like nuclei and nucleus. And not everyone knows Latin, so. Multi-word terms, terms containing suffixes, prefixes, repeated ones, and blah, blah. So, it's a very detailed guideline, and you need to prepare a very detailed guideline, otherwise you will end up with a noisy annotation. Okay, next, so let's say that people have annotated the data set with all the things that we wanted. So how do we evaluate the quality? So we use the, the traditional evaluation metrics, uh, like F1 precision recall accuracy and some agreement score between the annotators like Kohan's kappa and then we use the traditional accuracy and exact match. So uh, let me give you an example. Let's say that we have the English term detection and actually this is like the most crucial step and we use it as a proxy to the overall success of the project. Let's say that this is the ground truth. That means we have, we sample as 10% of the actual thing. So let's say that we want 3,000 sentences and then we need like 10% of it, like 300 of them, annotated by experts so that we can check the quality. So we pick 10% and we annotate it by ourselves. So we call this the ground truth. And then this is from an annotator. So what we check is, we check, is this identified correctly? It, this is true words, so this is true positive. It has this identified correctly. Traditional is not a term, so we have one false positive. This is correct, true positive is four, correct, correct, correct. And then we have one missing word, like stochastic, so we have one false negative. So basically you count all the true positive, true negatives, false positive and false negatives, and then you can calculate precision recall in F1. I'm gonna skip this. We do the same for the Turkish. The other metric is quite easy. So we are just looking at the labels. So we are checking how many, how many of, how many intersections we have. For instance, the alignment is correct. This alignment is not correct. So then out of nine, 
eight of them are correct. And same for the correction. Thank you. All right, then we have either uh, designed the evaluation and the notation guideline. And next is how do we hire people? <laughs> we need a lot of people to annotate 3,000 sentences. So that was the hardest part to hire people. You need to reach as many people as you can, and we prepared a brochure, for instance, we gave the project information, tell them what they are supposed to do, how much money they will get, what is the profile that we need, and then we put a URL for the application form. And we have used a lot of different channels to announce it, like faculty mailing lists, university WhatsApp, Telegram channels, Discord groups, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then we have some special science websites like physics news in Turkish and Turkish physics calendar and so on. So we ended up with 230 people actually filling the form. And then we did a webinar, we invited everyone to the webinar. And after the webinar, 160 of them said, okay, we are interested in doing this work. So how did we reach this many people? It's interesting that most of them came from LinkedIn. <coughs> and then faculty mailing groups, and then WhatsApp groups. So WhatsApp was not very effective, that was kind of surprising. Then we did a webinar, uh, I'm going to skip, so we talked about the label studio, annotation <coughs> details, how much they, they will pay, what is the timeline, and so on. Okay. So we asked them to do a quiz. So we had like 30 sentences, and everyone who actually wanted to get money has to do well on, in the quiz. So we gave them, okay, your threshold is 0 0.7. If you cannot pass this threshold, then you will not be hired, hired for the actual annotation test. And then out of 160 people, only 84 of them actually <laughs> uh, completed all 30 sentences. And the results were, were quite good. So we checked the quality of their annotation. And we found that like 35 of them was not really qualified. So we eliminated them. Then we ended up with 49 participants in the end. And yeah, their scores were great. So what we did was, we needed to train these people while they're annotating. So we wrote a script to send an automatic email for quiz evaluation. So basically it was checking what kind of mistakes they did and then how they can correct it, what is the correction, so that they can learn from their mistakes. Okay, so as I said, we labeled 10% as the test questions, and we showed the test questions during the annotation, so that we know that after they pass the quiz, they still have to perform high, right? So that's why you need some random test questions. And we keep on, I'm uh, evaluating their performance. Yeah, the results are quite high, around 84%, 81%, and this is considered as like very high agreement between the annotators. <laughs> yeah, she likes it. So, most of them are undergrads, but we also have 14 that were out of university, so they were actually working or doing some graduate studies. Age distribution, we only had four people between 26, 40, and all the than 40, we had only one. The rest of them were like undergrad students. Okay, I'm gonna skip them. So most of them were computer scientists. 
and that was good because that was the most specific expert field. So to summarize, um, we have ended up with high quality parallel corpora annotated with, annotated with the terms and the links between them and their correct translations. We had more than 40 annotators and we had to spend 215,000 Turkish liras, which is around $7,000. So next thing, now we are trying to finalize the disagreements between the annotators because each sentence is annotated by three people. So you need to resolve this disagreement somehow and then we're going to start building the models. Uh, I will just very quickly talk about how the bridging the Wikipedians and experts. So what we did so far is just we asked about the Wikipedians thing and we asked what experts think. And then, for instance, we asked Wikipedians questions like, have you authored a technical article? Do you have any technical ex expertise? Do you see yourself as an expert? Do you know any terminology database? Do you use any database while you are doing translation? What kind of translator tools are you using? Did you ask an expert when you were not sure? So would you use a communication channel? And so on. And for technical experts, similar things. What's your background? What's your level of expertise? Are you familiar with Wikipedia? Have you ever authored an article? What's your proficiency level? And have you, do you have any initiatives for translating English terms into Turkish? And would you consider helping out a, a Wikipedia contributor? So it took a long time. We have reached many people. So for instance, for experts, we have specific email groups. For Wikipedians, we checked that we contacted them with direct messages mostly. And we used Kurdish Mr. Village Pump, Telegram channel, and Instagram page. So in the end, we reached 9,000 experts just by email or some kind of message and only 182 of them <laughs> filled out the survey and for Wikipedians estimated one is like 1,300 and only 29 of them filled out the survey. So what did Wikipedians say? They mostly found it out from the uh, direct messages and most of them have authored some technical uh, article. Self-reported English proficiency levels are quite high. So when you look at the number of Wikipedians who translated technical fields, 89% of them have translated. And when you look at the technical wiki entry contributions, Two of them didn't contribute, one of them, and yeah, 11 of them translated, and 15 of them have altered. So they use tools like Google Translate, Content Translation, DeepL, ChatGPT, Yandex, so all these different kinds of tools. And most of them rewrote the article from scratch. That was surprising, but that's a good sign. Some six of them made small changes, and two, only two of them said there were no changes needed most of the time. So did they consult an expert when they were not sure? Nine of them consulted, 15 of them did not, and two of them were confident enough, so they did not mention it. So we asked them uh, if we bridge these two communities if we have some kind of a channel. Would they be interested in joining this channel? So two of them, in total 26 of them said they would be interested in joining them. And for experts, they usually find, find found us from specific email groups. Them. 
So the nice thing is, most of the people who filled out the survey was like, had ten, more than 10 years of expertise. People who actually want to contribute to the project, by the way. And when we look at their Wikipedia usage frequency, actually most of them, uh, like only 32% of them look up to Wikipedia frequently, and this half of them, like sometimes they look at, and most of them think Wikipedia is not very useful <laughs> for them. But when we ask them, like, would you help a Wikipedia author to translate a technical document? Would you give them feedback? Would you give them feedback about like specific terms? Out of 139, 123 said, yeah, sure, we will do that. Okay, to summarize, we have reached out many Wikipedians and technical experts, and many of them seem to be eligible, has enough technical expertise and interest to help each other. And what is next in the project is we will, in October, 17th of October, we will organize a public seminar. It will be online, so everybody is welcome. And we will invite these two communities and we will uh, present our final data sets. It will be a short one in the first session. And in the second session we will have a discussion panel where these two communities will discuss like, how we can help each other, what kind of communication platform we can use. So it will be like discussion and that would be great if you can also join. Thanks very much, and these are my students who actually did the work, so thanks to them very much. And if you have any questions, you can ask me, so you can follow us <laughs> on these platforms. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I have two questions actually. Yes. Uh, you said that um, building the model is coming. Um, I was wondering if you are considering, uh, if you thought about which of the um, of the parameters that you described, like the recall and the accuracy and so on, would you favor for these models, depending on their use case? And my second question if, is if you considered making those models available to Turkish Wikipedia as part of the content translation? Yeah, of course. The first <coughs> question. So there is some preliminary work on terminology aware translation, and there are some common metrics that people are using. So basically, you evaluate with two different metrics. One of them is the overall machine translation quality. So you use scores like blur, comet, and stuff. And for the terminology one, we, we have terminology consistency. There are many different ideas, but since we are dealing with a morphologically rich language, I think we will have to change these metrics to be on the character level. So maybe character F1 is the one that I'm thinking. So it will probably be character F1. And yeah, the idea is, of course, when we build the models, we will have like two different user studies. So the idea of contacting the Wikipedians is can we find 10 of them to do the user study for us. So basically, we will give them samples. One is. Uh, for instance, generated by our model, and then they will say, okay, this is good, this is bad, or something like that. And after that, if we have a good model, I would be very happy to contribute. It's all open source anyway. Mm -hmm. Everything will be open source. It's Thank you. I, I found your research very high level and very useful. And I believe it has, will have two outcomes which will be in the future somehow useful. One is the whole procedure, how you lead the project so some other committees can, 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 yeah. can use it or replicate it in, in other languages or other yeah. scientific fields because you are limited to among three scientific fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other is that, that, uh, that do you, I'm wondering if you are considering to upload to Wikidata, for example, because this terminology, uh, this, this, this kind of dictionary would be very useful for future projects like 
abstract Wikipedia or something like that. What do you mean by uploading to Wikidata? Uh, Wikidata has a project with the uh, with the uh, how it's called Lexins. Lex Lexins, yeah, where where you can uh, upload. Uh, Basically translations. That's uh, like like, like dictionary just. Oh, okay. Yeah, of. not really, but <laughs> simply <laughs> but. Yeah, but the dictionary is not machine readable. That's the difference. Yeah. The yeah. Lexeme yeah. part of Wikidata yeah. yeah. is is language oriented, yeah. and it allows you to see translations basically, but it's it's a very oversimplified view of what it mm. So is this like a bird level thing? Yes, yes, ah, basically. Okay. Yeah. And it would be... Uh, yeah, it would future. be much easier for the model probably, if you have just one word. Sure, I mean you can drop me an email because I'm still new to the community. Or, or if not, uh, it, will be, it will be the, the result available and you can Somebody else can do based on your database, for example. Yeah, so the idea is, of course, to write papers. Because I'm an academic, I have to produce papers. That's my outcome. <laughs> yeah, so there will be some papers out of it. But we also have a research page on meta research. And we are trying to update the page regularly. I understand that as, a, as an academic, your 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 result is a publication. But for the for the viral audience, the 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 background, background database the, would be the really useful result. The database is already there. It's so online. I, I mean the term terminology, the pairs. A pairs like annotated data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We will release it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Where? Just a clarification, where exactly are you building the database? Like where? Where we usually put everything on GitHub. GitHub is the open source repository yeah. for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I guess we will use GitHub. Mm -hmm. But there are some alternatives as well. So you're going to use this one also for the actual data sets? You know? That's a good question. I haven't really thought in very much detail. So there are a couple of options. For instance, my university library has an open source free option and it tells me I guarantee that I will keep your data for 10 years. But GitHub doesn't give me that guarantee. But GitHub is more visible, like everyone can search and find it. But I don't think anybody will search Coach University Library database. So there are some pros and cons for each different databases. We haven't yet decided like which one we shall use. Another idea we have is we have the workshop of machine translation. This is like the international machine translation community. And they make shared tasks. That means different universities, students from different universities participate in this task. So we give them this data. OK, they don't know Turkish, right? We just give them the data, and everybody's trying to develop models on this data and try to get the best score. So I'm also trying to organize like a shared task, like an international one, and encourage people to work on the data set to see like if it is easy, hard, how good, like how the quality of the models that they can build. And yeah, so that's the other idea. But if you have a suggestion for a database... You would, you, would use, you would use Wikibase, basically, and then you would make it also way more competitive with Wikidata. Which so database? Wikibase. 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 Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it's that a, it's a media wiki. It's a media wiki extension, so it provides you the opportunity to use all the translation options that you might have and be the it's a software behind Wikidata for the Okay. But it's open source software. Okay. So you can use it like for a local database as well, but you can then also use Okay, I'll check. Great. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestions. <laughs> Any other question? Okay. This is my email. If you have any ideas, suggestions, just Write me an email, okay? Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.